Focus, stupid thing. Hello again, I'm back with uh, the knife completed. Um, again, it's not perfect. You know, it's nothing like uh, an SE6 or a RAT7, that's for sure. Um, but, yeah, it's good. Um, I I sort of screwed up because as usual. So because um the only reason that handle is that long is because of that extended pommel. The um exposed pommel. Now I, I obviously I don't have a pommel on there, but um it's even so the handle is even longer. Which eh doesn't really matter. <coughs> I really wanted to. I really wanted to have um, pretty much a copy of that hand. Um, <coughs> pardon me. They they are a bit. The Rat Seven and the SE Six. The SE Six handles a little bit narrower. A little bit smaller overall. And um, so this. This is more like the thickness of the SE. I can see that. It's just, it's just a little bit thinner than the SE. And um, the the Rat Seven is just a bit too chunky. If you know what I mean, it's, it's blocky, just a bit too blocky. Whereas the SE Six is, like I said, a little bit smaller and definitely more more um, comfortable. Um, and then there's, and there's the fake K-Bar, Shell and Australia K-Bar. Um, that one I actually made uh, too thick. This is, this, this is a strange thing. This, this one's the thickest of all of these, yet it doesn't feel too big. I don't know why, it's still pretty blocky. I have contoured it a fair bit. I have rounded it a fair bit. I don't know that. That's probably why. It's a bit strange, but um, what was I going to say? Uh, so I've just got it in the K bar. Um, the only problem with having an extremely sharp knife and having a leather sheath is that you <laughs> you got to be really careful when you're putting it in that you don't go rip because I've already nicked it. Look at that. Cause uh, yeah, I haven't. Cause I, I've, after having done all this work to it, um, I have dulled it a fair bit and probably put a dent or a nick here and there. Just and I even sort of ground off a little bit near the uh, choil, so I might just extend that choil so it doesn't look weird. Yeah, it's a working knife. It's a hunting knife. Um, the handle is a little bit long, but yeah. it's not too bad. So there you go. That is the old hickory butcher's knife um, repurposed to be a hunting knife. The, the, one of the problems with the Rat 7 and the SE6 is just, they were, 
they're they're really heavy. I mean, this this is this is so much nicer. Well, the difference in weight is like that. This thing's probably this this thing's probably tw almost twice the weight of this, and it's it's shorter. But when you have a look at the thickness, and um, but. You know, in a hunting scenario, you don't need a ridiculously thick knife. You need a butcher's knife. You know, really. And this, hey, it's a repurposed butcher's knife. So, I mean, it's not 100% completely, totally finished. I still got it all. Oh, still got it. Still a little bit of mucking around to do, but at the end of the day, that's pretty much, pretty much finished. So. Uh, I'll do some still pictures so that you can see it at the start. So I didn't film. I'm sorry, I didn't film. Um, let me just snip it again. I didn't film the process of reducing the handle because uh, it's a uh, it's a tedious and messy job. All right, but pretty much almost. 100% of what I used, 80% of the shaping was done with an angle grinder, okay, with the one millimeter cutting disc, just to cut, trim it, just to trim the basic shape out, and then a flat disc um, to contour everything, and then and and also I've got a just a small um, uh, linishing linisher on my grinder which uh, I also used and then and then I used um, just a couple of different grades of sandpaper to try and reduce the roughness and then because I've actually got a polishing um, a cloth polishing wheel on my grinder so I because I, I can tell with all the dark areas on this this was polished the hand they, they polished the handle afterwards I think I think I might be completely wrong but uh, so I gave a bit of a polish and um, and then washed it and washed the the cutting compound off and uh, yeah it looks great uh, I did screw up with the order of the colors because it's not symmetrical but <laughs> I don't think anyone's gonna notice so anyway um, my advice as far as making my carter and customizing knives is concerned, uh, my advice is don't <laughs> just buy one because you know this is a project that I had sort of sitting around for quite a while and you know, I was tossing up what to do with it whether to leave the original hickory handle on or whether this and that and, nah, nah, nah. and then I thought, nah, bugger it, um, I'll do the my carter trick again. So you know, you really got to want to do it because it's, I, I wouldn't want to hazard a guess how many um, stalled knife projects are sitting in drawers or stashed away in, in garages or whatever. Because it, it, it is, it is quite a process. Um, and I definitely would not, I don't think I would want to do it as a, as a full-time job you know but yeah it's good it serves a purpose um it's a good hunting knife you know it come and i've got a scab that it fits in although i might do my um i might do kydex for it i don't know i'll see how i go because it's not cheap doing kydex that's another thing um but anyway um i've only got a little bit of just basic touch up work and I will I will put a, a, a new profile on it um, because yeah I did it is yeah I will put a new profile on it on the on the saber so hope you like it until the next video see you later